So when you have a home recording studio, one of the first issues you run into very quickly is storage. Where am I gonna store all the projects that I've worked on? And certainly if you have video that you're working on for a YouTube channel, things like that. Today we're gonna talk about how to economically store your projects and work and how do we find a high speed solution that doesn't cost a lot and can give you online access to economical storage. So this is a Western Digital Easy Store. It's USB 3.0. It's pretty fast. It's not incredibly fast, but for the money, you know, it's $229. Occasionally these go on sale like near Christmas. I think I got one for $169 and actually I got a 16 terabyte. So that was a really sweet deal. When I say they're not fast, let's go ahead and take a look. It normally shows at about 190 on the right and on the read. See there, it's getting up there on the read. But in any case, you can see this is not a terribly, terribly fast drive. So if you're doing sound recording, I would not recommend using this drive to actually do the recording too, but at the same time, if you do the recording on your main computer, then you can save the project off to back it up on this drive. Might tell you, hey, it's gonna take 20 minutes or an hour or whatever it is, but if it's the last thing you do during the day, it's really not a big deal. You're only spending 220 bucks, 230 bucks for 14 terabytes, so that ought to get you through for a while. But you can also see why for video projects, this is not very practical. It takes several hours to save every project. And again, that's not practical if you need to do it several times a day, which is why I opted for the Thunder Bay solution, which is considerably faster. The first thing I want to point you to is Other World Computing. They have an awful lot of things that can help you. And here I'm showing you the Thunder Bay 4. A Thunder Bay 4 connects using a Thunderbolt 3 connection. This is a four drive solution. You can arrange the four drives in a RAID configuration. Of course, you can also do RAID 1, which is mirrored. And you can also do RAID 5. And you can also do uh, JBOD, which is just a bunch of discs so you can just put them in there and and so there's lots of different ways that you can do this i highly recommend the raid and of course the raid software comes with the uh, unit and the unit is not very expensive this is the thunder bay 4 because it takes four drives again it's not very expensive i got this this weekend on amazon i'll give an example so what i built this weekend was a 32 terabyte solution and you can see what the price is here thousand four hundred dollars that's a lot probably more than you want to pay and I'm gonna argue it's more than you should pay because if you build this yourself, you can actually put better drives in it than they're gonna give you and you're gonna have an overall better solution and you're gonna save about $500. If you go with the zero gigabyte enclosure and let's go ahead and add this to our cart. So that's the zero gigabyte enclosure. A um, Couple of different views of it here. This thing is large. When I got it out of the box, I was impressed at how large it was. Not too large, but it will uh, definitely take up a little bit of room on your desk. So then the next thing we have to shop for is uh, drives to put in it. This drive was actually voted number one by uh, businesses as the most robust enterprise drive. It failed with the least frequency, which is why I picked it. And it's also very economical. I went for the eight terabyte and that's uh, $174.59 each. So you get four of these puppies and that gives you a 32 terabyte solution. If I go ahead and add four of these, you can see my total cost for this whole solution is just around $1,000. That's it. So I've saved $400 on this, basically doing this myself. Okay, so here are the drives that we got from Amazon. These are Western Digital UltraStar Data Center drives. These are enterprise grade drives. And then this is the Thunder Bay 4 from Otherworld Computing. So that's what that looks like. That's the front of it. This thing is large. Uh, I was surprised how big it is. It looks kind of big in the pictures, but man, when you pull it out of the box, it's pretty large. Uh, it comes with a set of keys here because it not only provides uh, storage, but you can also drive it to work. Probably wondering where the steering wheel is. You steer it with your mind. Yeah, that's right. We're high tech. This is the back of it. Not much going on there, just a couple of Thunderbolt ports, a S video port in the bottom. I'll give you a closer view of that here in a second. And then that's the fan. And I've already got some things plugged into it. So we're basically ready to go when the time comes. So you'll need some tools. Wanted to give you a view of that, show you all the parts and stuff like that that you need. You just need some basic tools. So we turn the key and then we'll just remove this front piece here. And then we've got some screws to unscrew. So we just need the screwdriver here. We're not at this point dealing with anything 
that is sensitive to electrostatic discharge. So we don't need to be careful yet. These bolts are attached to this via a spring. So the nice thing is they're not gonna fall out. You loosen them and they're not gonna fall out and you're not gonna lose them. And these bolts can take either a Phillips head screwdriver or a flathead screwdriver, so that's kind of convenient. They slide out very smoothly. There are a number of sets of screws, so if you, if you look at the screws here, these are for your um, SSD drives, the small screws here. The ones that are on the sides are for your mechanical drives three and a half inch drives. And that's what we're gonna use. This does come with a set of hard drive screws. That was something that I was, that was something I was wondering is like, does this come with hard drive screws or do I have to buy my own hard drive screws? So let's put the first one in. Now we're getting to the point where we are doing some ESD sensitive work. As soon as you open this uh, package, we need scissors to do that. So one of the things we're gonna to do too is we are going to remove all of the trays and just set them aside. And we'll also have a look. They're, they have letters from A to D. So A goes on the left. I'm gonna give you a look inside this bad boy. So we've got the SATA connection that includes power right there in the back, which is why these drives just slide in. And then we've got some lights up here that show power and also show when each of these are hitting. And I'm going to put the drive in so that the SATA is in the back. I'm being careful to touch the sides of the drive only. And I'm gonna drop it in. And then line up the holes. And it fits extremely well. So when you screw the screw in, it ends up being flush with the drive. Now, you don't need to screw the, you don't need to torque the screw like you're screwing in a transmission or something. You may have to take these screws out someday and you'll be glad you didn't torque these screws. If for some reason, you find that you don't have enough screws and that's not going to be the case here because they give you six screws for each drive, should be 24 screws. You can leave out the middle screw on the two sides. And it plugs in like butter. It's like butter. So I just finished A, what's next? Going from left to right is B. If you don't remember, sing the song. That helps me. So as I'm getting it out of the package, I'm trying to grab it by the sides because the sides are not electrostatic sensitive. So let's take a look at this guy. You don't want to touch that. You don't want to touch the bottom of the circuit board. You don't want to touch that. Anything here is safe. You don't want to drop it. Because that would really suck. These drives are not cheap. So another thing to think about is you want to make sure that these are oriented towards the top. 
as you lay the letter so that the letter is towards the top, you want to be able to read the back of the drive. So I'm going to screw in a total of 24 screws. It takes me about three or four seconds to screw in each screw. And for doing that work, I saved about six or seven hundred dollars. Because I can buy one of these with the drives already installed. For about seven hundred dollars more. And not only that, I don't get the cool drives that I bought here. I get cheaper drives. And I don't even get the capacity that I got here. So, fact is, I probably saved a lot more than just six or seven hundred dollars. Another thing people are afraid to do is they're like, well, I don't know what drives to put in there, and you know, I don't want to get the wrong thing. And so um, I'll just go ahead and buy it all. Okay, here's a crazy idea. Ask. Call off OWC and say, hey, what drives are compatible with these? And I need to get an enterprise class drive. And they'll say, yeah, use these. And then you buy them. Screw in your 24 screws. Keep your money in your pocket. Once you get it in the tray here, there's almost nothing left that is exposed that is sensitive to electrostatic discharge. This part is not. The plugs on the back are, but I mean, you really have to rub a balloon on your head and then touch the prongs to do any damage. The plugs are recessed, so you'd have to really work hard to make contact with them as well. There's a track system on the top and the bottom of this. So it's like a drawer that it, it fits into. That's why it plugs right into the SATA connector and the power connector in the back so easily because the drawer guides it in so you never miss. Don't tighten the uh, drive bay more than finger tight because you're probably gonna wanna pull these out in about five years to replace them. three screws left to screw in and I have exactly three th screws left from which it would logically follow that when you open the little packet of screws from OWC God help you if you lose one so don't lose them Place the door, you put the two pins in the bottom of this. Make sure the key is turned to the right. Turn the key to the left. Take the key out, because remember, this is what you need in order to drive this thing to work, because this thing has a lot of functions. And folks, that's all there is to it. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this into the wall and then I'm gonna plug the Thunderbolt 3 port into my computer, and then all I have to do is then configure the RAID, format the drives, and that's it. And I have to tell you, I am exhausted. I feel like I've done $700 worth of work. I'm just pooped.
and done for the day. select the Thunder Bay and I was actually surprised at how fast and, and this is also doing a very heavy read and write operation so the numbers are going to show a little lower than optimal so we're looking at about 900 megabytes per second almost a, a gigabyte per second on the right 800 megabytes per second on the read so 900 and 800 there it is it went up to 912 and the read is impaired now because it's currently involved in the read operation but that's pretty darn good for 32 terabytes of storage we use Software RAID, and this is the software that comes with it. It's called a Software RAID Lite XT. It gives you RAID 0, RAID 1, and JBOD. These are my disks that are part of the Thunderbolt array. When you click on one of these disks, you can blink the disk light, and then when you look on it, you can see which disk it is. And I went ahead and reconciled the label to the actual disk. So Thunderbolt A is actually disk A, and then disk B, disk C, disk D. That's a good idea, so that way, if you show any errors or anything like that here, you know which disk we're talking about. So there's a lot of things that you can do at the uh, disk level. And then of course you can build the volume and turn it into a RAID volume. And you can also see that I have my NVMe cards here in a RAID volume. So Thunderboy A is one of my RAID volumes. It's RAID 0, HFS plus. This comes with the drive. If you're doing videos, you might want to have a scratch drive that's high speed so that you can work on your videos very quickly and scrub through multicam. 4k something like that one of the things that i got is i got from owc i got this express 4m2 so it's very very small it's basically a case where you can put in a raid array of nvme cards as you see here and it's got a display port it can also daisy chain thunderbolt 3 and i'm actually using that to daisy chain to my thunder bay that i just showed you what you want to put into this are ARA P12. So if you look here, I got the 480 gigabyte. You can see the price there is very reasonable, $84.99. So you get four of those, you end up with a two terabyte drive. Maybe you want something larger, you can step up a little bit to the one terabyte. You can go as high as four terabytes. So you can actually have a 16 terabyte scratch drive. Most people don't need anything that large. So what you do is you get four of these and then you assemble them yourself. And the drive itself, if we go over here, the enclosure, is only 279.75. So 279.75 plus 89 times four, and you have a screaming fast scratch drive for your video. How fast? Well, I'm glad you asked. So this is black magic. So basically 1.5 gigabytes per second on the right and two gigabytes per second on the read. And that is incredible. So that is my scratch drive that I built myself using the Express 4M2 SSD enclosure together with four Aura P12's NVMe cards for like 87 bucks each. So we talked about some different options for saving your home recording studio files. We also talked about some options for using a scratch drive when you're creating videos and such using Final Cut Pro. Also a solution if you're trying to back up your video projects, maybe off of your scratch drive onto a more long-term solution. And we looked at the uh, Express 4M2 SSD enclosure. We looked at some NVMEs, the Aura P12. And then we looked at the Thunder Bay 4 with a couple of enterprise drives that you can purchase and put in it. And it's a very economical solution. So that's what I've got. If you liked the video, remember to like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And thanks for stopping by.